Hey, welcome back to part two of free fertilizer and soil amendments. Enjoy. Welcome to a new view. You can see the, the mist that's coming down now, and we got the smoke coming over the Smoky Mountains right here in our own backyard. It's so, beautiful. It is beautiful. Waking up to a postcard. Absolutely. Every day. So um, this one might be a little tough for some, but it, it is really beneficial. Um, if you have an animal that passes, um, you can actually plant them directly in your garden. Um, we have planted um, animals or chickens that have passed in the food forest as well as the garden. And two sheep. And two sheep, yes. The, the baby sheep that passed, we actually have ones in the orchard, right? And yep. ones in the food forest. One, one's in that orchard and one is right up here by Grandma's pippin apple trees. Yes, yeah, so they will, um, th it's not a waste then. They continue to <laughs> feed your orchard, your garden, your food forest, whatever it may be. And, you know, self-sufficient me actually did a video on this as well, where there was a kangaroo. His wife had hit a kangaroo um, in Australia. She was very upset. And uh, he picked it up. He actually planted it under his, banana I believe, tree, banana trees. And he said the next season, he could not believe <laughs> no, the, the growth. The next two or three seasons. Yeah. yeah. So so that is something that you can do, too. I know if it's fresh roadkill, and I right. would say fresh roadkill, it sounds weird, but it is absolutely something that can feed your garden. Yep. And it's free. Just don't don't get you don't make yourself roadkill picking up roadkill. Yes. Yeah. Be careful. Yes. Be very careful. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, if you have animals, you can put them in your garden. So, like, we we have chickens, we have ducks, turkey, guineas, you know, um, and, uh, sheep, and, uh, and <laughs> we're about to have more soon, hopefully. Yep. Cows. We'll be. Oh yes. Cows. Well, and we talked about something else that's coming up in the fertilizer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Anyway, so let them in your garden anytime. Right? Well, no, caveat. Ah. <laughs> Do you want to explain the no, caveat? No, no, go right ahead. <laughs> so we learned this the hard way because we were told, no, put the ducks in the garden. It'll be great. They're not going to damage it like chickens. That's what we were at. Now, see, that's that was learning from when we were in in Arizona, we were researching and we're like, well, you can't let chickens get in because they're going to they're gonna scratch everything up. Which, after your growing season's over, fine. Perfect. Let them have at it. Absolutely. But what I read was that you can put ducks in there, and they'll go through, and as long as your plants are established, they'll just go through, and they'll eat the, the worm, the worms, the bugs, the bugs, bugs. What, you know, whatever you don't want, anything moving, they'll eat. And including little weeds coming up, they'll eat the, the little weeds, but they're not quite so gentle. No, and like you said, if you have plants that are older, yeah. like an orchard or if you have corn plants that are grown up high or you know then ducks are great um but yeah. as we talked about in a former video they their little noses they dig under the ground and they can actually uproot plants which they they did yeah. uh so we kind of learned that the hard way so the ducks and the chickens go in um after growing season and it's actually great because they'll disturb the ground a little bit they'll fertilize it um so it's perfect during the growing season the guineas go in Guineas are not destructive like the chickens. They just go along the plants and they just eat whatever bugs they see on top of the plants. Now, they could eat some of the beneficial bugs, but if you have like aphids or something else, let the guineas in. If you have guineas, um, they'll fertilize. They'll also get rid of the bugs. Um, but yeah, just a caveat, turkeys, chickens, ducks, um, they're going to scratch the ground or they're going to disturb it with their nose. And if you have young plants, I would not recommend letting them in your garden until after the growing season. No. So something we learned the hard way. Um, now, one thing, rabbit manure. So like a lot of other manures, um, have you, have to, yeah, you have to compost it. You have to let them sit for a while, especially chicken manure. It will burn your plants. But rabbit manure can be used immediately. Yep. So what are we about to do? We are looking at some local options to pick up some rabbits. Yeah, looking at silver fox rabbits. Yeah, uh, folks nearby have silver fox and part what well, a lot of it for the fertilizer. Part of it also is a meat rabbit because we'd like to get off any kind of commercial food because we've got eggs so we can mix some meat with that for the dogs with kelp um, mm -hmm. but as you can also see behind us here the hillsides are getting green and long and we talked about well maybe we could get one of the sheep you know maybe tilly and and her baby down here on a leash or something 
and maybe leash them like to the tree and let them eat an area and then take them back to their area or to their to the sheep tractor and all that but it would be a whole lot easier to just build a small uh, rabbit tractor so they would be in their cage at night for protection and then during the day we can just you know silver foxes are, are good for easy handling too they're not skittish so docile we, good mamas yeah exactly so birthing. we could pick them up put them in their little you know, rabbit tractor you know maybe 10 feet by I don't know, three feet or whatever, put a little tarp so they can get out of the sun if they need to, but they could probably eat down this little area three days worth right here. Wow. No lawn mowing nope. and instant fertilizer. Exactly. And then, uh, and we don't like the idea and, and we know a lot of people do it a lot of, and, and we're not saying there's anything against it at all. Um, but we like the idea of letting them out on the grass during the day. And then at night we'll put them up probably in cages to keep them secure. And then we can get their rabbit poop underneath. Uh, we just want to make sure they can get out. And it also means less feed that we have to feed oh, them so if they're out on the grass eating what they normally eat. That's the main thing is we don't have to pay for any kind of food for them either. Just there they go. I mentioned probably some minerals we'll have to yeah, throw in for them. But, um, yeah, and the people we're getting in from, since we're new to rabbits, will be, um, they said they'd be happy to help us kind of get established. Picking so. their brains for sure. Exactly. But, but as, as with any of our animals here, best life ever. Just one bad day. Yep. Now, um, another really thing that I'm sure most of you have heard of, especially those that follow Permapastures Farms, grow comfrey. And we, um, it's easy we, to grow. Yeah, we talked to Billy. Billy's like, I can't sell enough of it. So we are looking at selling this next season. So y'all stay tuned because we have planted a whole bunch of so comfrey. He, he can't, he can't supply enough of it. That was he, it. He, yeah. He can he, sell enough. Yeah. He, he, he yes. sells out. He can't keep up with the order. So we were going to yeah, help out with there. But. So, but yeah, so we're looking at growing some comfrey next season. We just split a whole bunch and planted a whole bunch more, and we're going to be planting more. But one, okay, multiple benefits to comfrey. But one of the great things about comfrey is once you have a plant, you should never have to buy it again because you can literally, I mean, you can't, you can't chop kill it this right stuff. Out of the ground. Yeah, take it out of the ground, chop the roots, chop the crown, put it back in the spaces you want comfrey to grow, and it will, it, it will grow. It's just a very hardy plant. Another benefit to comfrey is it is a bioaccumulator. So it sends out these long tap roots and it takes the minerals that are down deep in the ground and it brings it up and makes it available to the plants around it. That's why it's called a bioaccumulator. Um, so comfrey is great and you can do a chop and drop method whereas you just chop the leaves, you uh, drop it, mulch or, yep, throw it yeah. down as mulch and, and it'll break down um, or you can actually make a compost tea out of it. And there's a lot of videos about that as well on YouTube. But comfrey is a great, great plant um, to help fertilize, um, to help amend. So I highly recommend growing comfrey if you can. And everybody loves it. The sheep love it. The chickens love it. Decker loves it. Our dog is sitting yes, out here. He she was planting him, not watching him. He walked around behind and started chewing leaves off the one that she had split. Yes. But yes. I'm and sure bees. It will survive. And bees. Bees love, love it. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Actually, uh, we got some honey from Billy and Michelle. I don't think they've got any for sale right now, but if they do, you should get some because the upcoming season, their honey, their bees were all over the comfrey and it had just a little bit different taste. I mean, you get people always say, oh, sour wood honey is like the best. If you get a chance, get some yeah, of their honey. That, that comfrey honey was uh, really you know, good. It, yeah, it was really good. It's really good. Um, another thing you can do, you can make your own bone meal and blood meal. Um, and I know this sounds really weird. And I know some people are like, well, I can buy bone meal really cheap. You can, but you can. if you, yeah. If, if you can. If you, if you can find it. But more than that, like if you're cooking a turkey or you're cooking a chicken and, and cow bones are going to be a lot harder to break down. So I would recommend turkey, chicken, you know, uh, bird bones. Um, they're just easier to break down. But it can you, be done. It can't, yeah you've got the carcass anyways yep. right so with bone meal essentially it's it's not a really difficult you um would make bone broth so you just boil the bones you make a really good bone broth you boil them for a few hours um take the bones out make sure all the meat and the collagen everything are off the bones make sure they're clean put it in an oven 250 um for like three hours and then once you're out you'll want to break them down you can put them like in a plastic bag or something you know put you know towel over it or something um break them down into smaller pieces throw them in a food processor or a blender done you've got bone meal yep. so a little bit of sweat equity and uh you're you're going to throw the carcass away anyway so why not make um bone broth out of it number one which well, is healthy for you well, you get your meal first so yes. you get all the meat then then your bone broth which yes. is also very healthy <laughs> and you know what bird's bones are hollow 
before they're cooked, you can actually give them to dogs. I don't recommend it, but they say you can. Once they're cooked, they become brittle, and that's when dogs can get shards and splinters in their throat. So you don't want to ever give uh, cooked bird bones to dogs. But so what else are you going to do? Throw them away? I mean, you could. You could just bury them. Well, not throw them away, but you could just bury them in, like we talked about, just directly burying, like, yeah, you know, your kitchen scraps. But, you know, this... Forever to break down. It would take for quite a while to break down, so, you know. Yeah, and we don't rec I, we don't we don't give any of our dogs bird bones. No, just we don't because we don't want to risk it. But um, and then bone meal now, or excuse me, blood meal. So bone meal is pretty simple to make. Blood meal is not overly difficult either. Um, we've never done it. We've never done it. So I have seen it done um, from several people. Um, it stinks. <laughs> so it's it's quite malodorous. It's, it's a good outdoor activity. <laughs> yeah. So you'll want to boil it. You boil it for a few hours until. Uh, most of the water's out of it. It's going to be sludgy, um, very sludgy. Um, and then you basically uh, want to take it and dry it out. You can put it like on a tarp in the sun. Some people put it in the oven. It's like I said, it can stink. So I don't know if I recommend that, but a really low, low setting, like, I don't know, 170, 180, something like that. And then it's done when you can actually uh, break it like a potato chip, like it becomes very brittle. Invite the neighbors over for a barbecue and have burgers on one side and have your blood no. boiling on the other. <laughs> but now, um, uh, bone bone meal is going to have like your um, your calcium, your phosphorus, things of that nature, and it, it has more minerals. But those are the main ones. And then blood meal is going to be your nitrogen. Um, and you want to be careful, just like with all nitrogen, you want to make sure you only use a little bit, maybe like a teaspoon and a gallon of water, uh, because it can burn your plants. Um, but it's a really great source, especially for nitrogen loving plants like corn. Quick, they will love it. Quick pick me up. Quick pick me up. Exactly. So some free, like I said, it takes a little bit of sweat equity, but it's free. Yep. So, okay. Now, um, I have heard about people. I wanted to, to let you know, I have heard about people mixing the blood with sawdust. Um, they buried in the garden for about a year. Um, and then it breaks down. My only concern with this is we have a lot of wildlife around, so uh, wildlife can smell blood. So I would worry that we're going to attract um, unwanted wildlife, and now it's going to put our animals at risk. Yeah. So definitely, definitely would call in coyotes, I'm sure. Yes. Well, and raccoons and hey, skunks, which still stinks, by the way. Oh, it does Ooh. still stink. Ooh, it's getting a little better. And but, possums. And, yeah, uh, it's been raining, so hopefully. And, yeah, all kinds of critters. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Jadam, there's a book called Jadam, and I actually meant to bring it out with us and forgot it, so I'll put a picture of it. Um... Jadam, the Christian Dior. <laughs> no, right? No. no. Oh, that's Jador. That's Jador. <laughs> so, Jadam is a book, it's from a Korean author, a South Korean author, um, and he does organic um, gardening, and he talks a lot about just making fertilizer from things you have on hand. Um, he does do big batches, so you'll have to um, scale it down. Scale it down. Well, maybe exactly. you don't. Maybe you're really blessed and you can do That's it on true. a commercial level. But That's true, yes. Um, but great book. He also has a lot of natural insecticides, so I would absolutely recommend checking out the Jadam method. Um, another thing, wood ash, right? Wood ash can be amazing. You can use it, you know, you burn, you, you can have a fire outside. We have a lot of wood ash from our wood stove. We can sprinkle it on the garden. Really, really great. You just want to make sure that your soil is not too alkaline because wood ash um, can make the soil more alkaline. So just kind of an FYI. So, okay, make biochar. So the very basic definition of, of biochar, it's a type of charcoal that's made using paralysis. Um, or py pyrolysis, sorry. I'm um, heating organic material um, with very little to no oxygen. Okay. Um, and it makes this thing called biochar. There are a ton of videos on YouTube about it. Permapastures Farm also has a video about making biochar, so yeah. check that out. Yeah, just think steel trash can inside of a bigger steel trash can. Your, your biochar is in, in the inside one and then you burn all the way around it. It basically essentially gets all the moisture out of that, but mm -hmm. that's a simplified. High, high, simplified version of it. Yes. Yes. So, and yeah, we're going to try a method. Um, we've got some brush piles and we saw a video about making biochar directly from the brush piles. So we'll bring you along when we do that and we'll see how it goes. We'll see. Yeah. But what is the major advantage of biochar? Do you remember? Uh, it's free. Well, no. It's not free? Well, it is free. Oh, okay. If you make it, you can buy it. But right. if you make it, it's free. 
um, it tastes good on steak. No. I don't, I don't think you want to eat biochar. <laughs> so biochar has these little, it has these crevices in it. Um, and as you put it on your garden, um, microorganisms will actually set up rooms. So it's kind of like a, a home for microorganisms. Yes. And all these little microorganisms can go in and set up that hotel and feed your garden. Organism condos. Exactly. Microorganism condos. Exactly. Now, um, if you have a closed pond, um, use your pond water to water your garden, like, especially like, if you like, have ducks. Like the fish tank. Yes. Closed. Our, we say closed pond because like ours, the stream runs through it on out, so it doesn't, it doesn't accumulate. Yes. Yeah, so, but if you have ducks, um, you have wildlife in there. I mean, frogs usually are in ponds. There's going to be wildlife that are going to be pooping in the pond, so to speak. And so you're going to be able to take that, those nutrients and put it directly on your garden. Yeah. So well, the, the soil, when they dug out that pond, you go back to one of our early, early videos when we dug it out, that soil that you dug out of the old pond when we were recovering it was just black. It's I beautiful. mean, they're just, um, it's still piled up over on the side. We need to pull some of that up and Yeah, it's use beautiful it. soil, beautiful yeah. soil. Um, use green manure. So I don't know if any of you have heard of green manure, but green manure is basically using live plants to actually add nutrients to your soil. And this is done a lot of times by cover crops. Um, so once our garden is done for the summer, we will put in a fall cover crop, especially in our corn, corn area or potato area. Um, but we're going to allow that to go through. Typically fall, um, false crops will die off in the winter. Um, and then uh, there's multiple ways if it doesn't die off that, that you can use like tarps and also that we don't like using um, plastic, but we right. will use a cover crop and it will replenish everything that was taken out from the garden when we grew. We'll also be using compost. So there's multiple ways that you can do it, but green manure is great, like comfrey. Um, using the comfrey and the chop and drop method and having the comfrey grow up by our trees, um, it's kind of like a green manure. It's, it's to using a plant and allowing that plant to actually bring nutrients back to the soil and bring it up. Um, and that's why like the food forest, a lot of food forests, you'll see ground covers. And some of those ground covers you plant can be like nitrogen fixers or legumes or things that will help fix the soil. And then the other thing, do what we did last year, use old hay. And um, old hay, we were amazed we put, what's the matter? There's a pile of old hay right there, oh, yes. right by the tree. Yes, because okay. we're going to plant another, you can step back. we're going to plant another section of potatoes. I will bite hard. Two, two is one, one is none. That's right? right. So we're doing another potato garden, especially if his mom and Jack get out here, we're going to need to grow a lot potatoes. more food. Yeah, we need to grow, <laughs> we need to double the food that we grew last year. So we're looking at creative ways to do that. Yep. Um, but yeah, so old hay. So we put compost down and then we put old hay over it. And as y'all know, we grew the potatoes, uh, amazing potato harvest last year. But after the harvest, we looked at the soil. It was amazing. It really was. Yeah, so caveat though with hay is you can get some weeds in there um, from the hay because it does have some seed in it. Um, yeah, but, but you never know what's going to come up. We had those uh, tommy toes come yeah, up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Very well, prolific I'm for us. Watching for those to come back again. We <laughs> save seed. I don't know. I know we have some. We gave some to Billy. I don't know what happened to the ones I got. Well, you scattered them along the creek. Well, and all well, kinds of I did there so. too, but I saved some of them as well, so we yeah. could actually intentionally put them places. But it's been crazy with the house renovation. Everything's in the shop, so once we're able to get a lot of stuff in the house, we'll be able to find a lot of stuff that we're missing. <laughs> <laughs> but old hay, I'm telling you, it, it is amazing what it yeah. does to the soil. Um, so find somebody. There's a lot of times you can go out to the country, go to the fields. Um, people will have yeah old old hay that's been sitting there. Go ask them if you. Can have it yeah because the spring flush is coming and once that happens say that hay will just sit and rot where it is so yeah we've got old hay bales that um a friend of ours was like yeah come get them so just get, yeah it, ra it rains when we try to get there and when when we try to get there the tractor that we need to load it isn't available so <laughs> we'll, we'll get it we'll get it but. yeah but when i was doing the hay um we put a lot of old hay on the pasture the parts of the pasture that need to be um fixed really we've got yeah. a part of the pasture that's just in really bad shape that we've been doing different things to that have been helping it. And I added old hay. Um, and uh, for those of you that saw that video, we just used old hay to try to re regenerate. It's doing really well. Yeah, we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, but it made a huge difference. I mean, it's yeah. so much better up there. Made a huge difference, but you could actually see when I pulled apart the hay, you could actually see it composting yeah. in the actual hay bale. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. 
but just a few tips for you um, just on how to add, you know, how to get free fertilizer, how to add um, amendments to your soil for free. Some of them will take some sweat equity, but number one, you don't have to pay for it. And number two, you don't have to worry whether or not you can find it. That's true. So. And I cannot believe we got to the end of this and she forgot her absolute favorite free fertilizer. You manure. Oh, no. Oh. You won't catch us doing it. No. And relating back to the the tips video I did about the uh, the bucket toilet and the bags, one of our viewers said, hey, yeah, that's basically you're doing a composting toilet. If you have wood shavings, you can throw those in there. And great point. I totally spaced that. But yeah, Doug and Stacy, there are people that do videos on human manure. And yes, that's human waste composting that and using yeah. it and you have to wait a few years to do that it's going to get pretty desperate around here before we're going to be doing that yeah, now that being it's, said there are a lot of people that use it doug and stacy swear by it and i'm not saying that it is i, I sh it's not wrong it's not wrong i it's just, just for it's me just not it, for us. <laughs> it, it yeah and i shouldn't have said ew i, I should have said that i that, but that that's why I left it off the list so we could, you could get her genuine reaction to it. <laughs> yeah, I okay. So it's it's not wrong to do. Uh, Doug and Stacy have done amazing things with yeah. it, um, so, and I know a lot of people have, and it's how people have fertilized for hundreds of years, thousands of years. Yeah. Um, it just kind of grosses me out a little <laughs> bit, so it won't be happening in here. But it it is an option. Yeah. That's it is option. absolutely an option, and if you are interested in it, there are actually even waste facilities, like the the waste facility in the the, the yeah. town nearest us. They yeah. actually have, so you can come pick it up. It's already composted, and so there are a lot of cities that have it. For me, I would worry about the medications and the pesticides, plastics and the plastics, everything else that's in that manure, because I don't know those people. Right. Um, but yeah, so for us, it, it's not for us, but but it is an option. It is an option, yes, and it, it is free. Yep. There's plenty of it. <laughs> so. Some more than others. No. Well, right. now on that note. On that note. Hopefully I didn't offend anybody. <laughs> yeah. If that offended them, we lost them long ago. <laughs> That's true. Good point. <laughs> All right. Well, from the, the misty mountains of northern... Western. Northern, Western. North, North Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina. Western North Carolina. Yes. I don't know. Different that, world than North Carolina, it seems. Yeah. So, anything else? Yeah, I can't, I I can't think of anything else that we can cover on this. but Yeah, just let us just, know if y'all have any other please, ideas. Yeah. If you've used any of these, what you are currently using to amend your garden and fertilize your garden, we'd love to hear yep. uh, from you on what you're doing as well. Yeah, please. All right, all get right. out of the get out of the mist. Yeah, I guess so. My yeah. hair's going to be all free. Well, it probably yeah. is already all frizzy. I think we might have sold a few of our uh, new chickens down there, so we'll probably have to run into run into town and meet somebody, hopefully. But yes. All right. Well, as always, make sure you're getting your pet spayed and neutered. There's too many unwanted animals out there, so help out on your end. So, anyway, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. God bless. We will see you on the next video. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all.